Friday, June 3. This is the news on PBCJ. I'm Gabrielle Thompson. Acting head of the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, Richard Thompson, says his team has established various programs aimed at ensuring the country is prepared to manage a natural disaster. He shared information on some of these programs and ODPEM's operational procedures at Wednesday's meeting of the Public Administration and Appropriations Committee, the PAAC. Simone Absalom Gale reports. Deputy Director General of ODPEM, Richard Thompson, who's also acting head of the organization, says his team is working on a communications project for all involved in disaster management. That looks at building out a public safety network across the building out a public safety network across the country. So we are all of our first responders can communicate on the same platform. Critical in terms of our country's early warning systems and, and critical to the ability of our country to effectively communicate in times of disasters. He says early warning systems are critical to the country's ability to respond and prepare for any disaster eventualities. The project will cost about 12 million US dollars. Mr. Thompson says they have also been working with the community groups and municipalities. We would have also looked at aspect of, of shelter management. We would have done shelter management training. We have a series of activities to, to, to carry out further deeper into the hurricane season to ensure that we are, we are still engaging the, the, the parishes and engaging the, the, the community group in our own our preparedness for the, for the hurricane season. And so we would have done extensive shelter inspections. And those shelter inspections would be against COVID imperatives. About 124,000 persons are projected to use shelters in times of disasters. And with additional safety protocols due to the pandemic, more money would be needed. PAAC Chairman Mikhail Phillips questioned that aspect of OTPEM's preparations. The specific resources to raise the comfort levels while um, dealing with um, temperature checks and things like that. How is that? Now that you're, we are now into the hurricane season, how is that being financed? A lot of um, emphasis was placed on looking at um, your sanitization process for shelters. And, and so a good part of our, our relief budget would, be, would have been placed in terms of looking at that and, and doing acquisition for, for, for that. Turning to operational matters, the ODPEM team was questioned on the departure of Leslie Harrow from the post of Director General of the entity six months after he was appointed. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Local Government and Community Development, Mrs. Marsha Henry Martin, explained that the position was taken on the secondment. Whichever civil servant is entitled to, consistent with the staff orders, and that is what happened, sir. And at the end of it, he indicated that he um, had a preference to return. With any system of succession planning, the ODPEMS Deputy Director General would normally and usually take leadership of the entity. And that is what has happened in this case. And the Deputy Director General um, is usually a technically sound person and would normally have the ability to carry on in this sense. Simone Absalom Gay reporting for the news on PBCJ. Adjustments have been made to the anti-gang legislation. On Tuesday, Parliament gave the nod to four amendments to the Criminal Justice Suppression of Criminal Organizations Amendment Act 2021. National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang, who piloted the bill, says a strong legislative framework is critical in ensuring sustainable crime reduction. Here's more in this report. National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang, while closing the debate, assured his colleagues that the amendment provides additional tools to undermine criminal activity. These offenses include simple last in Section 5 of the Simple last in Act, of last in Act and receiving stolen property, Section 46 of last in Act. The committee was of the opinion that the, team, the term applicable offense would more appropriately capture offenses of this nature that may not necessarily be considered serious. The discretion of the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution and the courts will not be abused. There are enough checks and balances within our legal framework to safeguard against overreach of the provisions of the Act 
which is essentially what the member was concerned about. Indeed, given the definition of three or more members, it could be invested that three young men, teenagers gathering the play field planning to rob a grocery shop could be called as a gang and so charged. It is expected this will not happen. Gang review and investigation to go over time and the gang members are identified and you know for track through the system and it's unlikely that we'll go to the level where you abuse a number of young men which is um, I know history of our country and operational security forces tend to indicate that there can be overreach and more than one in, in many areas. But I think we're getting out of that, and there will be no abuse of this kind of, um, of the provision, which is necessary to, in fact, ensure the gangs who have become very involved in various kind of incommerting activity be pursued, arrested, and charged. The amendments expands the list of aggravating factors to be considered when sentencing an individual convicted of certain offences under the Act. Madam Speaker, I know as the bill be read a third time. Bill entitled an act to amend the Criminal Justice Suppression of Criminal Organizations Act to specify additional offenses in which criminal organizations are engaged in order to fund their activities, to increase the number of offenses under the act, to expand the list of aggravating factors to be considered when sentencing an individual convicted of certain offenses under the act, to improve the trial procedure in order to protect the identity of witnesses and the four connected matters read a third time and passed. The bill will now go to the Senate. Simone Absalom Gay reporting for the news on PBCJ. Ground has been broken for the residences of Terra Nova. The $7 billion development is touted to be Jamaica's ultimate luxury residential community. The investment is being spearheaded by Terra Nova CEO Andrew Hussey and his wife. Prime Minister Andrew Holness said the move is a reflection of the investor confidence in the island. Our investors, the Husseys, have confidence in the Jamaican economy. They have confidence in the fiscal and monetary policies of the government. They have confidence in the growth and spatial development policies of the government. They see the future as one that will be better than the present. And therefore, they are taking the risk of putting their own resources. I'm sure you will be borrowing significant resources, getting other people to put in equity, and you're going to be putting your entrepreneurial and management assets also into this project to make it happen. I want the Jamaican people to appreciate it and understand it, that this is a significant investment. The 14-story tower will be sited on the grounds of the Terra Nova All Suite Hotel, the only AAA Four Diamond internationally rated hotel in Kingston. Motorists should look for an increase at the pumps for both gas and diesel. Also, global oil prices are seeing little change. We get this plus more in this extended business report. As Jamaica joins the rest of the world in preparing for the annual hurricane season, the Insurance Association of Jamaica, IAJ, is urging homeowners and renters to arm themselves with property insurance. Speaking Wednesday at the IAJ's press brief, President Dr. Adrian Stokes said just over 20% of Jamaican homeowners have insurance coverage. We are concerned that many Jamaicans have no property insurance in place. As we begin what is expected to be a very active hurricane season, we implore homeowners and business owners to contact your insurance company or broker to ensure you are properly covered. Citing life insurance as a vehicle for investments and investment protection, Dr. Stokes called the life insurance industry the largest mobilizer of medium to long-term savings and investment in the island. 
but he thinks the industry can do more and is calling on Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark to hasten his steps to revise investment guidelines for the industry to play a greater role in providing funding for both the private and public sectors. There are some important reforms that the government can implement to fully unleash the development potential of the insurance sector in general and the life insurance sector in particular. A revision of the investment guidelines applicable to the industry. This to provide greater latitude in what we can invest in. This will unlock committed long-term capital to help rebuild our COVID-ravaged economy. Advancement of the pension reform agenda to provide more robust pension arrangements such as vesting, portability, and participation in multiple pension schemes. It is estimated that only about 10% of our workforce is a part of a registered pension scheme. And finally, the area of microinsurance. I must also appeal to the government to speed up legislation in this area so that persons with lower incomes will have an insurance solution that is more accessible, affordable, and with simple KYC or know your customer requirements that will give major support to the government's policy of financial inclusion. The IAJ says it is optimistic about the prospects of the insurance industry over the next year, but remains cautious as this success depends on the recovery of the Jamaican economy. The U.S. economy is recovering at a much faster pace than previously expected. This driven by significant stimulus spending in that country, as well as the brisk pace of vaccination. This strong recovery in the U.S. economy will obviously be positive for Jamaica. This fact, coupled with a soon-to-be greater supply of vaccines in Jamaica, should set the basis for faster economic growth in 2022. This will ultimately benefit the wider economy and the insurance sector in particular. In 2020, the insurance industry paid out over $60 billion in policyholder benefits, over $16 billion in general insurance claims, $24.4 billion in death and living benefits from individual life insurance policies, and just over $20 billion in health insurance benefits. According to the latest ex-refinery costs from state-owned oil refinery Petrojam, motorists should see an increase at the pumps in the prices of gasoline and diesel, effective Thursday, June 3. 87 and 90 octane gasoline will be sold for $144.67 and $150.38 and per litre respectively, up by $1.77 and $1.75. Following an increase of $1.71, automotive diesel fuel will be sold for $136.99 per liter. Ultra-low sulfur diesel has seen a price increase of $1.69 and will be sold for $146.21 per liter. Kerosene increased in price by $1.76 and will be sold for $113.48 per liter. Meanwhile, propane liquid petroleum will be sold for $56.67 per litre, following an increase of $1.99. Butane liquid petroleum will be sold for $61.18 per litre, after an increase of $1.38. Expect price changes as marketing companies and retailers will add their respective markup to these prices. In Wednesday's trading session, the JSE combined index declined by 25 points to close at over 422,000 units. Overall, market activity resulted from trading in 90 stocks, of which 34 advanced, 35 declined, and 21 traded firm. The junior market index advanced by 15 points to close at over 3,000 units. Stocks advanced for Access Financial Services Limited, AMG Packaging and Paper Company Limited, and Berger Paints Jamaica. Stocks declined for 138 Student Living Jamaica, Barita Investments Limited, and Blue Power Group Limited. Trading firm were 138 Student Living Variable Preference, 1834 Investments Limited, and CAC 2009.5% Preference Shares. 
Future Energy Source Company Limited Ordinary Shares was the volume leader with 2.9 million units, followed by Wigton Wind Farm Limited Ordinary Shares with 2.4 million units and NCB Financial Group Limited with 1.8 million units. In foreign exchange trading for Wednesday, June 2, the U.S. dollar sold for an average $149.29. The Canadian dollar ended trading at $125.92. The pound sterling traded for $212.23. And the euro sold for an average $184.97. Oil prices were little changed on Thursday after strong gains in the previous two sessions on expectations for surging fuel demand later this year, while major producers maintain supply discipline. Branch crude futures were up 12 cents at $71.47 a barrel after touching their highest since September 2019. West Texas intermediate crude futures rose 8 cents at $68.91. In today's Culinary Trails, the path to great food leads to roly-poly. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to roly-poly. Thank you. Have a strawberry ice cream, please. Okay, you want strawberry ice cream? Yes. No problem. I just love roly poly because it's so creamy and nice, and I get to watch how they make it. It's just so good. We are a company that goes beyond to please our customers, and we want to be different in terms of giving customers a chance and a feel to create, make their own creation when they think about ice cream. Right? It's. Guilty pleasures, but at least <laughs> we want to, um, them to be a part of their own creation and what they really want. All our ingredients are fresh, fresh ingredients, 100% natural, made, and the ice cream is made from scratch, handcrafted from scratch, right in front of your very eyes. The milk base, which is a vanilla base, is placed on the platter with the ingredients, and it is freeze blast within seconds to make your magical rolls. Hence the name Roly Poly. Regular ice cream, they sometimes be on cold storage for a very long period. But with Roly Poly, all our ingredients, everything is made right in front of you from scratch. And it's your own creation. We offer a wide variety of over 50 amazing flavors, which um, is 
it, the ingredients are freeze glass within seconds right in front of your eyes. So you get to be a part of the mix by creating, mixing and matching your own flavors from syrup to, uh, from sauce to toppings. An acai bowl is uh, it's a very filling and vitamin packed fruit dish. It is made with blended fruits. It's a vegan based product where we offer fruits freshly made. You can have it for breakfast. The fruits are blended together, topped with granola and goji berries, whatever choice of topping you decide. We do them blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, uh, strawberries, and um, as I said before, the granola. Sorbets, fresh fruits made from scratch, and they all come in rolls, except for the acai bowls. We also do smoothies, 100% natural, and also we do milkshakes. You can have your strawberry cheesecake milkshake, your mixed berry, whatever you're liking. We use less sugar and we offer the very best when it comes to a wide range of variety of fruits and it, they're freshly made. As I said before, freshly made from scratch and you get to see the old process, you get to be a part of it. So we have our flagship store, which is in Island Village, Ocho Reyes. We have two stores in Montego Bay, the Witter Village branch and the Fairview branch. And we have one in Mandeville at the Reliance Center. Well, Roly Poly should be your place of choice because we are different and we go beyond all measures to please our customers and it's just an amazing experience to be here. You get to be a part of everything we do. You tell us what to do, when to do, and you get the old bundle right there. On the regional scene, we begin in the Bahamas. The government will introduce a value-added tax holiday in July for hurricane preparations. The Minister administration will also commence a back-to-school VAT holiday ahead of the school year for a second consecutive year. Jasmine Brown reports. During his two-hour communication, the Prime Minister touched on a number of issues as he revealed new VAT initiatives as well as hit out at the opposition. However, one thing he did not talk about was the looming debt. This year, for the first time, we will undertake a VAT holiday for hurricane preparation. And this will be during the month of July. This will assist Bahamians and residents to enjoy back free shopping on a range of critical hurricane supplies and equipment. Dr. Minnis said the Ministry of Finance will provide the details of the dates and the items to be included for that VAT free shopping. As it relates to back to school VAT holiday, it will happen again in August. We then introduced the back to school VAT holiday last August. And this provided Bahamian households with VAT free shopping on a range of school supplies. The Prime Minister also announcing funding, support and consultancy assistance for Bahamians entering the vacation homes rental market, which he said is booming. The PM said in March 2021, some 4,222 Bahamians and residents participated in this market, earning more than $14 million that month. During his two-hour contribution, Minnis also lashed out of the opposition and its, quote, jokey claim that his administration had no plan or new ideas to grow the economy. The PLP desperately want to get back, as people would say. What was that? The cookie jar? Yeah. At the cookie jar, I guess. <laughs> but just every, 
Just every, every Bahamian child knows Kiki, Cookie Monster on Sesame Street. Like Cookie Monster, if you have, you have the history of reading, what? The cookie jar, oh. They are very greedy for cookies. They see them every time, every time they get a chance, they attack the cookie jar without mercy. Every time cookie, every time cookie monster sees more, sees some cookies, he can't help himself. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. St. Lucians are being urged by the Deputy Director of the National Emergency Management Organization to remain vigilant and prepared as the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season gets underway. The 2021 Atlantic hurricane season officially commenced Tuesday, June 1, 2021. NOAA's Climate Prediction Center is forecasting another above-normal Atlantic hurricane season. Forecasters are predicting a 60% chance of an above-normal season. However, the experts do not anticipate the historic level of storm activity seen in 2020. The Deputy Director of the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, urges St. Lucians to not only heed the advisories, but be prepared for any eventuality. We are asking people to prepare, ensure that um, your trees are trimmed and overhanging trees, they are trimmed off the road of people's properties. And those of us who have trees that are hanging onto our neighbor's properties, we need to come to sort some, some sort of arrangements to cut those and trim those. Um, because, you know, you are liable in the event that they, they um, your neighbor's house is damaged during a windstorm or, or, or hurricane. Um, so we are asking people to be mindful and to cooperate with each other because we have reports where people have complained that trees are overhanging onto their property from their neighbors. The Disaster Coordination Response Organization, which comprises a number of public and private sector agencies, reminds the public of the pandemic protocols implemented at shelters. As usual, we have been doing the inspections of the shelters, and this year, um, should we have to utilize the shelters, uh, we are letting people know that we, uh, we will be enforcing strict COVID protocols. We have a shelters protocol that has been established specifically for that. Uh, people will be screened. We will have vigilant security, an orderly, um, orderly line into the, the, the shelters. People will be screened every day, uh, masks, the need for mask wearing, uh, the need for disinfecting and cleaning more so than normal as uh, because we want to ensure that we do not have breakouts at the shelters um, it's an easy thing that can happen so we need to be mindful of, of of that issue the various district disaster committees have been working to strengthen their response to disasters nemo is also whittling down the enlistment of its core of volunteers the deputy director gives assurances that the systems and procedures are in place to respond to an adverse weather event during the hurricane season. If we do have notice of a, 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 a storm that is coming our way, um, there will be a, an emergency NEMAC meeting. And from there, the National Emergency Operations Center, which is the NEOC, will be activated. And that is usually headed by a director of the NEOC, who may or may not be the director of NEMO. So that will be operated out um, from NEMO's headquarters itself. Um, once that is done, the information is fed into the center. Um, it is not a command center like we have for COVID. It is an emergency operation center. Maria Madar advises St. Lucians to take heed of information and messages from official sources. The 2020 Atlantic hurricane season was a record breaker, with the most named storms at 30. It was only the second time that the list of storm names was exhausted since naming began in the 1950s. And in sports, we go to cricket. Left-handed opener Kieran Powell put himself in the selection mix for the South African series when he narrowly missed out on 100 on day three of the four-day West Indies inter-squad match in St. Lucia on Wednesday. 
The 31-year-old who played the last of his 40 tests three years ago was dismissed for 95 as Jamar Hamilton's 11 ended the day on 218 for four in pursuit of 311 for victory at the Darren Sammy National Stadium. Powell faced 175 deliveries in just over three and three quarter hours and stroked 11 fours and a six before falling late in the final session with triple figures beckoning, skying a drive at off spinner Rakeem Cornwall and falling to a catch at short cover. And that's our package. You have just watched the news on PBC Day, the people's station.